Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 62 with me Craig Barton. Now following on from last week's review of 2014, we are ready to get 2015 off to a flyer with a whole set of new wonderful resources all uploaded and shared by the kind and talented users of the TES Maths website. Now, an absolutely lovely resource to kick off this new year has been uploaded by UK Dana, and it's called Starters Odd One Out Set A, and you'll be pleased to know there's a set B, C, and D that go along with this as well. Now, let me give you a bit of background about how I first discovered this resource. Uh, basically, the way it works in our school is that homeworks are all collected in on a certain day, and for year eights, this happens to be a Thursday, and uh, like any other year eight, or in fact, any other year group, uh, when Thursday's lesson comes along, I am met with a deluge of excuses saying, oh, sir, uh, I forgot it or I couldn't do this question or blah, 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 blah. And that normally eats into my first kind of 10 minutes of my lesson, which is dead annoying. And I always want the rest of the kids uh, to be cracking on with something useful. Um, so I was just on the lookout, see if there's anything different out there. And I came across these and I thought these are absolutely wonderful for this. So let's take a look at them and then I'll tell you a bit more about how I use them. Uh, if I go into Bidmas... So you get a grid here, um, and if my maths is right, I think there are 16 numbers in that grid, and there are 15 questions. And the deal is that the students have to work out the answer to those 15 questions and match them up to uh, those 16 answers. And of course, that will leave one answer remaining. And the beauty of that is, if the kids have done it right, everyone will have the same answer that's not been assigned to a question. So it's kind of self-checking in that sense. But it's better than that, this, because the natural extension activity there is make up as many questions as possible for the remaining answer. So that can keep all the students busy and it's nicely differentiated there. Um, but what I like to do as well is, because there's, there's a chance that students have kind of fluked upon this, this last remaining answer or used a kind of some kind of process of elimination or something like that. So what I say to the students is, can you also write me down which two questions you found the hardest? And then I take a little uh, vote at the end of the uh, at the end of the 10, 10, 15 minute period, and we just go through two or three of the the trickier questions, the ones that the kids have voted for that they found the most difficult. Because I don't particularly want to be going through all fifteen of them. I mean, I can do if I want, or I can just project the answers up or something like that. But I want to turn it into a little bit of a discussion, but I don't want to eat in up too too much more of my lesson. So that's what I do. I set these for my kids at the start of the lesson. They all crack on with it. We have a vote at the end of what was the uh, what was the, the missing answer that didn't match up the question. We then discuss two or three of the hardest ones. And also, I've, I've dabbled in a bit of this, just like I do with the Tarsia you Convince Me. I like uh, giving the kids some of uh, their, their own fellow peers it, uh, their questions for the um, answer that didn't match up with anything and seeing if everyone else can solve it, seeing if they agree whether it's right or wrong. And that's nice to do that because some of the kids come out with some really complicated bid mass in this case related sums and it's a lovely challenge for the other students to check whether they're right or not so some beautiful questions there but that, that that'd be fine if it was just a one off the bid mass but what makes this absolutely exceptional is this is for everything as well so fractions of a quantity there's one that you could imagine just giving to the kids uh, just to practice that key skill and again they get a little bit harder a half of a third of 24 and then again ex um, extension make up your question for the last remaining one and then what about this bit of negative numbers the classic ones there with the double minuses and all that that's going to get the students uh, really thinking and as i say there's not just one set of these so in set a that there are there are six there then here's set b there's another six for you there's a set c and a set d so i've been using these with my year eights uh, once a week during the homework collecting in time and it's been brilliant just to keep ticking over their key skills I could imagine if you had, for example, a year eight kind of CD borderline group or maybe a foundation group, these will be excellent to build in as part of an, uh, a regular consistent revision routine as well. Absolutely wonderful resource to kick off 2015. Get those downloaded. And if you've used them, why not in the comments section below, just uh, share how you've used them or even pass on your thanks to UK Dana. And I'll be back with a fresh resource of the week next week. Take care. And bye for now.